Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus. And I'm Shelby. And, and we're, we're Krugers, Krugers with the C. C. How you doing, honey? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I see that you have another fabulous meal today. Yes, I'm excited about today because we have we have a very special guest and yes. it's the morning time, so I got to do some morning food. You've been trying to do this since I went. Yeah, I have. So, all right, so, all right, so what's on the menu? So we got fruit, mm -hmm. some pastries, some oh. cinnamon buns, and some muffins, and I made some quiche. What kind I of made quiche? four different quiches. Right. I guess that's how you would say that. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I made a broccoli and cheese quiche. And uh, bacon, egg, and cheese, uh, sausage, and then a sausage and bacon. Already so we're going to eat later on. We're now just, we can chat and chew right now, All but right. we're going to get it together. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very special person with us. We've been knowing this guy for at least seven years. <laughs> and for all of these years, this brother, he worked. He worked. He worked. He's an entrepreneur. He's been featured in several magazines around town, and his name is Robert Frazier. How you doing, bro? Hey, how you doing, bro? I'm good, I'm good. Thank I'm you. glad you're here how with you us. How you doing? All right. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, now we've been having this in the making for seven years. For a long time. We've, we've been talking about this, and uh, you hit me up, you was like, let's do it. So I'm here, and, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that you're involved in. We want to put that out there because this brother work, he got he got some businesses, and he supply a lot of people that I run into. You supply them with different things. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about your business. Okay. Um, um, my business is Comfort For You, and there are um, two legs to my business. One is um, ComfortForYou.net. Mm -hmm. um, the other is Worship-Life.net. And um, the, the business started off with just selling scrubs and right. shoes. And as I started going to my customers, they started asking me, hey, can you get me gator scrubs? Can you get me a license plate? Uh, so I ventured off into um, licensed sports products, okay. Okay. Um, nice. medical products, safety products, awareness products. And that's pretty much what um, ComfortForYou.net has to offer. Okay. How long have you actually been in business how long has it since 2004 so what made you want to start saying i'm just sell scrubs um well i started selling shoes first uh -huh. i i ordered a pair of shoes clogs uh -huh. um they were clogs usa at the time they're not clogs footwear with a k and um <clears throat> they were so calm i was having back problems mm -hmm. and the shoes were so comfortable my back you know problems went away Mm. And um, so I contacted the company I bought them from to see if I can buy some to sell them. And they were selling them pretty expensive to me, but I started buying them from them. Um, and then I started reaching out to Clogs um, to see, which is the parent company, it's Latitudes, to see if they would um, do business with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried and I tried. They would not do business with me because I didn't have a storefront. Right. And finally, um, the CEO told me if um the, if the rep was willing to work with me that they would let me do it and I contacted the rep and um he he came to me to my home and set me up and I've been going ever since and that's kind of where it started and it just went from there. Wow, that's persistence. How long did that process take before the you know getting with the rep trying to get that business over a matter? Of how long did it take? It took me about eight months of just constantly just. Um, bugging them mm -hmm. to get it started, but I'm I'm very persistent. Right. When I, you know, if I want something, I'm gonna get it. Right? Did you? Was it ever a point where you was like, man, I'm just, you know, I ain't worried about it. Nah, I just kept rolling and, and I go back and email them again, mm -hmm. call them again, and. Um, what give you that drive though? Cause I, if how I'm gonna use the church word, if I could be transparent. You know, that's how they do when they get deep. If I could be transparent, I was just playing. But if, if, like me, I'll just get fed up and I'll be like, all right, it ain't working out. Well, what make you keep going and like, I ain't going to stop. I'm going to get this. Well, just um, being, you know, raised poor and um, not having much, um, it gives you, I think, a, a edge. Mm -hmm. um, not just always just being in survival mode, but just like I've been told no so much to no no doesn't bother me. Mm. So um, 
I just, I, you know, for me with this with this particular situation, I think um, just having a, a something I believed in right. was what kept driving me as far as the shoes um, because I had personal experience with them. You know, I was like, man, and um, so that's pretty much it. I, you know, if I believe in something, I don't have trouble um, going for it. That's a good thing to have. That's like because you you could be in business with so many people and really they're just trying to sell you something, you know. But like you had a, a good experience with it, and you sound like something like I could trust this person, you know. And and I always felt that with y'all. I always felt that we we'll, we'll have your wife here. We'll talk about her, uh, our first experience meeting her. You know, it was just a calm and peaceful thing, you know, to meet y'all. All right, but I'm not going to get too deep. I'm not going to be too transparent. Don't cry. Yeah, I ain't going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you started out scrubs, shoes, been in business since 04. Mm-hmm. All right, where are we now? Well, we're in 2018. Yeah. And in 2018, um, we've expanded. Um, in 2011, I uh, started Worship Life. And um, basically, Worship Life. Um, it's, it is a part of, right now, it's a part of comfort for you, but um, it's a part of the business um, where I sell communion, church products, okay. uh, Christian t-shirt, music, theme products, um, sound equipment, microphones, etc. Um, and the website for that is worship-life.net. Mm-hmm. And I got a .com, which I'm going to convert it over to the .net site. Um, but... Um, that it just it just um I saw a need um with churches like I do custom tithing envelopes. I mm-hmm. saw needs in um churches. Um and like it really worked out because the book the Christian bookstore closed and then right. people were um a few years ago, I think it's been about two years, people were trying to figure out where they were gonna get their communion and different things mm-hmm. and um I was right there. And right. um the uniqueness of my business as it stands, as I deliver to a lot of my local customers, okay. um, so that's that's one of the things that separate me. And a lot of people come to you and say, you know, but their their price is a little bit better. Sometimes I might not be able to beat their price, but I can beat their service. That's so I offer and customer service, and it comes from here. Right, right. right. It's good that you saw a need because I, I went to that Bible store, and I'm like, this place is closing. And, and that's like, it's an epidemic because all of them closing, it seems like. I don't know if it's the online thing or whatever, but you need you got Bibles? Yes, I got Bibles. I got Christian books. Um, they can be embossed, um, personalized. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, you name I'm it really, my, my site is a, the worship-life.net. really is a Christian bookstore with a twist. You hear that? A Christian <laughs> bookstore with a twist. That's good. That's good. I like that. What What other things can we find on that site that we might be looking for? I already know you said communion. Yeah. Pa- I've seen a couple people uh, that you provide communion with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pastor towels. Um, what else? Um, envelopes. Offering envelopes. Tied, um, communion wear. Um, I have all kind of music theme products mm-hmm. um, for musicians. I have um, unique products such as a pedal stop for that keeps um, the pedal, the sustain pedal, from sliding mm-hmm. um, while you're playing. Um, keyboard is like that. Um, I have Christian T-shirts, hats. Um, just it's about, about it it's, it's a lot. I sell um, some of the things you won't find on the site, like uh, some of the um, microphones and sound equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, you have to call me for those products, but I offer um, most of the major brands and that stuff too. And you can give a little bit of insight because you're a musician. Yes, I'm a musician. I understand sound. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. And when it comes to businesses and music, do you mentor like younger people, helping them get started and helping them with that same drive? to capture that same drive that you had when you was going for your shoes in that company? Do you help young individuals? Well, sort of off record. Um, with my schedule, I don't have a lot of time to, you know, to, like, be a part of a mentoring program. But, yes, I do. 
Um, I have a lot of people that call me and ask me about, you know, starting a business and some of the things, the do's and the don'ts, where to go, how do you get your federal tax ID number, how do you get your resale certificate and stuff like that. So I've, um, I, I'm constantly getting calls about that stuff. And then with music, um, I have um, young, you know, a lot of time young people, you know, want pointers. And um, a lot of time I give them pointers um, because they have raw talent. But a lot of times with music, they don't learn the the theory behind mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Like things that make playing a lot easier, and more enjoyable, and mm-hmm. make it less work. Um, so yes, I I'm I'm there. What I like to do is just um, pour into people. So I I you know I'm I'm always available to do that for young people. Yeah, because they need to understand that because everything's so quick, fast, in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you are a good example of holding on because you didn't give up. And some kids just want to give up because it didn't happen, you know, right away. I'm and you a just mir- have to understand it has, you got to put that work in. Yeah, I'm a miracle because starting at 26, you're not supposed to be any good mm-hmm. at, you know, music starting at 26. But um, I just thank God for the opportunity that he's getting, you know, the things that he's giving me. Um, and I'm able to, like I say, help people. And that's that's really the driving force about, behind anything I do is helping people. I can attest to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we both have, can. Right, yeah, we can attest to that. Um, something you said that uh, sparked interest. You said that um, people call you about business tip. How did you, did you have business? Did you take any business courses or you just jumped in and went? I jumped in um, head first, Mm -hmm. and I just went for it. And then um, I I, I did have the opportunity to um, take a business class that was offered through BCN, which was a company um, that was in town, and it was a um, business. um, It was basically writing a business plan and doing stuff like that, and I took that class. Mm -hmm. But it really helped me, um, you know, um, kind of fine tune some things, and I've, I'm I'm one of those people. I learn better when I have to research things. So mm-hmm. I've I've been researching things and figuring out how to do things. And sometimes you know people might say it's the long way around, mm-hmm. but um, it's really helped me be become well rounded. Mm, yeah, I feel like that. That would give you more insight. You know, as, as far as somebody telling you do this or do this. You, you go to research, you're going to pick up a little bit more here and there. Right, because sometimes people telling you they don't want to tell you everything. No. So you I don't get that. People don't, people don't want to help you. Right. People don't want to tell you. And we're going to get into that in yeah, a minute, I too. So like, minute. Like, but before we do get into that, like, what do you think your biggest obstacle was? And how did you defeat it as far as doing your business, going into your own, holding your own? And what was your biggest obstacle? Probably would say finances mm-hmm. was one, and the other was the um, the stigma that goes with black business owners. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, for some pe- reason, of course, I you know I didn't have the money that maybe some of the big businesses have. Mm-hmm. So um, you know I couldn't go after certain business, and that right. that was you know that's been a problem. Um, but the other thing is the, the stigma that kind of hangs over that for some reason people think that they're going to get less when they see an um, African-American um, business owner. Right. Um, and that's that's with both African-American and Caucasians. Right. Um, so um, I've, I, one of my things I've been wanting to, been trying to do is to kill that. Right. You know, I just, like I said, I, I, just, I just try to make sure that um, everything I do is professional, mm-hmm. um, that um, I give receipt, professional receipts to people when they um, purchase something uh, from me, that I'm um, um, honest with people mm-hmm. about, you know, any situation that comes up with their order that I, let them, that I call. Because I found out if you call people and let them know, mm-hmm. most times they'll be okay with what's going on. But right. sometimes if you run and hide when something, you know, because you can't control, you know, certain things right. in business because you, if you're in business, you depend on other people to get products and supplies. So um, one of the things is just to, to provide excellent customer service right. um, and do what I say when I say I'm going to do it, right. how I say I'm going to do it, where, when, how, all those things. 
um, is a big thing for me because um, that's people build confidence and you know, and your name, your name go farther than you will ever go. Right, right. And right. I, I've learned that if people have a good experience, they may tell one or two people, but if they have a bad experience, they they'll find people to tell. You gonna be on right. Facebook. They're going to put you on Facebook and they're going to blast you. But I want to know, how do you deal with those individuals that always come to you because they probably know you or seen you in past and they want a discount? Or they expect something. They expect to pay less yes. or get it for free. A hookup. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. They, they expect a hookup. How do you handle that? Um, I You know, I give my price and, I'm, you know, my, you know, I determine who get a hookup. I don't let my customers determine that for me. Um, as as African Americans, we have to get out of that. And you know, because what I do with my with people that I deal with, I ask them how much, and whatever they tell me, that's how much I pay. And most times, I give them a tip. Mm. Okay. On top of that, so right. so that's that's my mentality on it. I don't think we should ask our friends for a discount. I think we should be willing to pay more. Right. right. You know. Um, but I just I just keep it moving, you know, because people have have that expectation that um, and usually they don't even want to buy anything. They just want to see what your answer is going to be to okay. um, the hookup. Well, so it's like you wouldn't go in the store in, in the mall room. and be like, hey, let me get a okay. discount. Right. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't do that. So if this person is having a business, you should help them flourish. It goes back to that same mentality, crap in the bucket. You know, you want to pull me down, you know. But enough of that, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. So, you know, but anything else you want to say about that as far as being in business and dealing with some of those type of things? Anything that you just want to air out while we're here? Well, I just think that we we as um, as African Americans, we got to be more supportive of each other. Right. Um, every other culture support each other. Mm -hmm. um, we will go and we'll spend... You know, we'll go buy BMWs and Mercedes, mm -hmm. and then um, the same people come to me and be like, um, and want the very best of scrubs mm -hmm. or shoes or whatever, and don't want to pay the price. Right. But then I'll see them two weeks later with the with with the stuff, and they they probably paid the same price or more for it. But it was just that 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 unfair expectation that I should give them give it to them for right. for the low for the low. Right. You know, um, and I, I just, you know, I just feel like we got the, you know, you, you won't see it until you get in business for yourself and you start, you start seeing stuff and you be like, you, you understand, right. you know, um, for me, I, I go out of my way to try to support other businesses, you know, not just black owned business, but I, I'm really, um, sincere about, um, supporting black owned business, mm -hmm. not because, um, prejudice or racist or whatever you want to call it, but it's just because we trying to come up, right? You know what I mean, and um, so so that's where I'm at on that. I don't think it's nothing wrong with saying I support black business because what's wrong with it? It's like we are taught like if we support ourselves, we have to be justified or we, we have to give, give a reason. reason or we have to say, oh, but I'm not this. I support black business. Yeah. Period. I think, I think that the kicker is the fact that we have to say it. I think that's the uncomfortable thing, that we have to actually say it because everybody else do it, but they just do it and they don't have to say it. Yeah, other right. cultures just find each other and they do it and do it. Other cultures, mm -hmm. they don't say it. They just keep it in the family and keep it moving. We should do the same thing. It was like that article we read about mm -hmm. how uh, it was just saying how other families will bring their people in They'll all work to achieve a common goal. And once that person has reached the status, they'll bring somebody else in and they'll repeat the process. And that person that reached the status, they pour back in right. so the next person can flourish. And I think we should have all cultures, everybody, all cultures, but should it, have us. that, us especially. We should have that same mentality. Especially you know, us because we the ones, it's like, we are trendsetters. And I'm just saying, we, we trendsetters, we, we make stuff popular. If you look at that uh, Mountain Dew commercial. Which one? Nothing could stop me. I'm all the way up. That's fat you know, mm -hmm. we all over the place. And, and 
people follow that. Uh, let's go back to saying even about the Black Panther movie. How it was people in that movie. I'm talking about like who I, I believe haven't been to theaters in years. Mm -hmm. But they came to support that movie. You see what I'm saying? So I think that we should have that same drive and same ambition when it comes to supporting one another. I agree. I agree. I agree. I, um, one of the things that I've um, I've ran across with dealing with um, with churches, um, um, I thought one of the things that I thought as being, like I said, African American and having a business that really caters to churches, mm -hmm. I thought churches would just jump on the opportunity to mm -hmm. do business. And I still have some outliers that's just not willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had some say, well, I ain't have no choice but to come to you. Right. Oh, wow, you know, um, and and it's 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 apparent that we expect less, and I'm I'm determined um, to kill that. They might say some, but they can't say all. Right, right. Customer service is is a thing that we should all expect, and I'm glad that you're doing that. I'm gonna support you. That's why you're here. We support you Appreciate right you. now Appreciate because you. we so want much. you. Uh, out there. So I wanted to ask you one more question about the worship life. How did you come up with that name? Just my son sent me a um a text, <laughs> and um in the text it was two um hash. It was a hash and a circle, and a, a um a O and a hash mm -hmm. with like oh, hands, hands raised. Yeah, yeah, hands raised. And um so I took that and I um. Like I'm an entrepreneur, so I took that um, immediately when he sent me that. I came up with a business idea. Wow! Um, and that's where it came from. Right. And you know what? Uh, I got the stick on the back of my truck, and I see people looking at it all the time. But I don't think that they recognize it's a dude doing like this or a gal. It's a girl. Uh, it's actually okay. a girl. Okay. Okay. She's crazy. She's like. What? Yeah. She when when I looked at it, I said, "Wait, okay, I get it." Because it was like, "What is a worship one on one?" <laughs> I said, look at it a little closer. Just look at it a little closer and think about what it's saying. And you can actually see in the uh, symbol, like, it's somebody raising their hands. I thought that was cool. But it takes you a little while to look at yes. it. But I kind of seen it when I first got the sticker from you. And, um, yeah, that's that's cool. That's uh, <laughs> that's crazy how your mind works. Though. Yeah, I mean, I, I can mark it. Like, I'm, like, when I see this here... I'm ready to market, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can market chat too. You can tell people about chat too. Yeah, uh, that'll be pretty good. Yeah. Well, switching gears a little bit, I guess not really, because you're talking about text, social media. Mm -hmm. How has it helped your company mm -hmm. from when you started in 2004 to now? Because social media is such a big platform for mm -hmm. everybody to promote. So, has it? hindered you has it helped you what has it done for you um it's definitely helped um I'm, i've been able to get you know get products you know i mean otherwise um before um fate like facebook and twitter and stuff like that um the main way to do um business online was through pay-per-click ads um through email marketing mm -hmm. and um and um that's that's still a part of it you know but but facebook Mainly Facebook has really helped because I've been able to reach people all over the country, all mm -hmm. over the world, and um, they're able to, you know, then you can set up, um, um, boost boost your posts and mm -hmm. pay for it, and you can kind of uh, select your audience that you're dealing with. So it's been a big help, and it's it's one of the tools that I that I use and I plan to continue to use okay. Facebook. That's your primary uh, social media. Yeah, Facebook is my primary right now. I do some Twitter. Um, I haven't mastered Twitter yet, but I, I, do, I do a little bit of Instagram. I, think, I would think that for what you do, Instagram would pop, but I don't know because I, I, I don't hardly know. We have know. to get somebody younger in here to ask yeah, them. Yeah, okay, because you know she knows, but I, yeah. I, I, like, because you sell product, mm -hmm. and it's, but see, then you got to think about, I don't know, because a lot of young people. It's the, it's the artists, and what I found yeah. out with, with the younger people. They don't spend like they don't spend like us. Not on you know. I mean, they will, right. but they don't automatically spend like like we do. What you mean as far as we do? Um, they spend more or less. I think they 
they spend more on what they want, yeah. but not on what probably what we're promoting. Okay, yeah. oh, so you know your audience. Yeah, my audience yeah. is is not necessarily the you know some of the right. licensed sports stuff, but like I say, they they really careful about what they spend on. Now, when they like something, they'll spend a lot of money on it. So if I was selling cell phones and yeah. and yeah. and stuff like that, then I think it'll be. But I, you know, I'm I'm definitely trying to um, move over into the Instagram market. Oh. Speaking about um, advertising, how did you get put in the magazines? How did that happen? Okay. And what uh, magazines were they? <laughs> Ooh. I got if you it. remember. Yeah. Um, I know they were through United Way. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, I joined United Way as a small business partner. Mm -hmm. And um, so I donate money to United Way each month as a business partner. I'm on their uh, website. I'm listed on their website as a business partner. And um, as being a business partner, sometimes they'll we'll do photo shoots mm -hmm. and um, videos and different things. And then um, I was I happen to be featured in a couple. That's cool. Yes. How did that feel? It felt it, it, it you know at first it was just you know it was just all right, but then um, when um, I started getting calls, I had one one gentleman from my church. He was up in Savannah, Georgia, and uh, he was at a hotel, mm -hmm. and he said he picked up this magazine and started flipping through it and saw my picture, you know? <laughs> and they got, yeah, so he was very excited. He came back, he was like, man, I bought this back, man. I saw your picture in it. He was like, you you get, you get everywhere. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was a good feeling, and um, um, I just, you know, it's, it's good to see yourself in it, and I just see myself in um you know, in some of the national magazines. Like right. when I see that, I see a national magazine. And, I think um, you have yeah, yeah, so yeah, I believe it's going to. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, anything else? So, what's your ultimate goal with comfort for you and um, worship life? Where do you see it going? Where do you want to land? You want to land like a a store in the hospitals for your scrubs and your shoes and. Um, I see. I see it as being um, definitely in. Um, eventually be in a storefront mm -hmm. um, I I look you know one of the things that excite me most is that I'm going to be able to hire people uh -huh. and, and bless them be a blessing to some families and ultimately um, you know the Bible talks about um, blessing your children's children mm, yeah. so I want to be a blessing to my children's children yeah, yeah. Um, so you and know that new grandbaby yes out. yes Yes, um, that's that's what one of the things that motivate me um, is my children's children. That's good. I gotcha. Before we switch gears again, biggest failure, biggest accomplishment to date. How did you deal with both of them? I was telling a friend the other day. I said I heard no so much it don't even phase me. Right. Um, but I've been told no a lot. I've been told no about you know manufacturers wanting to do business you know and for various reasons most times really the no's usually come because i don't have a storefront mm -hmm. you know but um i've heard a lot of no's in that area um biggest accomplishment business wide believe it or not man on the positive side what gives me the most joy is to see the um satisfied customers mm -hmm. um like you know, because like what we were talking about earlier is that a lot of times people don't they don't expect a whole lot. Right. I mean, they expect something to go wrong, and just to see, um, it's like a sign of relief. Some a lot of time on customers' face to be like, "Wow, he was he actually got this for me." You know what I mean? <laughs> people are like, "Yeah, he came through." Right. Um, and um, that's that's a for me that's the probably the most rewarding thing is to see people happy with what they got. Yeah. And um, to see them um, when issues do arise, to see um, them happy when I'm able to follow through and mm -hmm. fix it. Okay. And I just ask that because it's probably somebody that's going to watch and they're probably on the verge of just giving up, you know, on the verge of hearing no so much so they believe the no. And I ask that because you say you started eight months trying to get your first products off the ground. And you did it, you know, and ever since then you've been moving. I've seen people that you came in contact with. I know people who get stuff from you. Mm -hmm. And it's just been an ongoing process. So I ask that because somebody needs to listen, you know, it just because it's taking a while, it might be some stuff moving out of your way. So I just ask that 
for that reason. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some of these current topics. And I, I just wanted to do this just for the sake of conversation and get some different people's opinions on stuff. Church of Beyonce, what do you think about that? <laughs> um, I was raised... My mom used to tell me if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. uh, It'll be funny if uh, we have the beehive coming after. Uh, they will come. They will come. It's like, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at this because I never thought that I would be in a world where people actually worship another person. Like I know we do it like because we like like LeBron or we like Steph. They're the only two basketball players I know because I don't watch sports. But to actually see people worship her, that was crazy for me. And have a justification for it. it that's, um, the Bible's fulfilling it, so. Um, it, it's scary. It, it is scary. Um, I don't have words for that. Yeah. It blew my mind, you know, but, um, do, do you feel like that there's a trend like with these school shootings or anything like you feel like people just doing it to follow a trend? I think there are a lot of copycats because they get so much media play. Mm-hmm. Um, and and also it's not really being dealt with. We talk about it, but we're not dealing. We're not dealing with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, a lot of times um, people. Make it about it's not really necessarily about guns. It's having a healthy respect for them. Mm-hmm. But they're saying um, the issue is is mental illness. Now, what you think about that? Because I just think that's a bunch of bull. I don't think mental illness is it is the issue. It may be, but I don't. They lead with that. So if well, they, I go shoot up somebody I, I'm, I'm mentally ill they seem to do that only when it's um, when it's beneficial when, when they're other than African American yeah because of um, you well you light skin well you is too yeah we might so y'all might get a pass but if y'all put me off in there they're gonna go back and pull up my history see if I've ever been arrested mm-hmm. and with me it's a criminal pass and you're an angry black guy I'm an angry black guy yeah so um, I, I think um, I think anybody that kills somebody that'll go do that is mentally ill. But I think it's just we just um, you know we just kind of pick. It's almost like we do with sins. We make one big and one small. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think you got to be crazy to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even if even if you're doing it because you're copying somebody else, but just to be able to do that. Something's wrong, you know what I mean. Some I demonic, some demonic presence or something that that will make you do that. Right. But um, I think where it throws us off is that fact that you know what I mean. Like uh, when it comes, because we know the whole Black Lives movement, and people people don't like to hear you talk about that. But it's like a, the value of a of a black life versus the value of a white life. Mm-hmm. Don't seem to, it's not it's not measuring up in um, America. And so, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's where I got the issue with the they throw that mental illness card because they're treated more sensitive and I just don't like that. I mean, just because you say they're mental, they mentally ill, they killed seventeen people or yesterday I think eight people died. I thought it was ten. Ten, ten or eight. Still, it's over. It's over zero. You killed right. somebody, and I just don't think that they should be treated that sensitive. I don't care you. You knew what you were doing. You kept mm-hmm. doing it. It's not like you made a mistake. Well, it's not a mistake. You shot one, but you kept shooting. So I just think that they shouldn't be treated so sensitive. Yes, they may have. They'll come out alive too. Uh, That's what they I mean. They don't kill I was stuff. trying to be. Um, I think the thing is, is that um, hopefully they can start catching this stuff before it get to that point. Right. And get these people some help. Right, and that's what I'm saying. If mental illness is such a problem, why are we not, like you said, nothing's being resolved? Why are we not pouring money into that? Why are we still pouring money into what they call the NRA? Mm-hmm. That's the gun people. Why are we still giving money to them instead of resources for people to help mental mentally ill people or just plain out mentoring? Because sometimes these children just need to talk to somebody. Right, right. So I just... I don't know, in my head, I think it's more simple than what... Chris Tucker said it the best. 
Now, I'm not. I'm a paraphrase. Guns don't kill people. Crazy people with guns kill people. You know. So you know, and and I do think that it needs to be an outlet for for kids to talk to somebody. You know. And you said hopefully, you know, it'll be nice if they could talk to their parents. You know, parents are so busy um, trying to make money. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they forget to spend time with their children. They on the internet. Right. They don't. They ain't learning how to build bombs. Right. And, you know. And, and I think that's. I'm glad we pride ourselves. We got a dinner table. We sit down at that table. You know. Um. I feel like that's important because kids need an outlet. I'm realizing now, kids are facing a different challenge than I was facing. Yeah. And they're probably facing a different challenge than you was facing because the world is so different. Mm-hmm. Like, I work with a lot of younger people, like 19, 20. The world that they live in is just so different from us. And we was told, like, when your parents told you to do something, you had to go do it then. Mm-hmm. You weren't able to say, but why? Or and, and it's not an excuse for a kid to say why, but now I'm realizing that these kids need to understand what they're doing. Like, they don't understand, just go do it because I said so. Well, why am I doing this? I think they're more planned out now. That's how I think it mm-hmm. is. So, I don't know. But um, I just wanted to see where you was with that. Pick your mind on that. You got any current topics? Nah, you didn't touch them. Yeah. My Snoop. That was it. All right. So, um, Snoop, what he did? What about Snoop? Gospel. Oh, I wanted to ask you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you. Ask. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. I do it, brother. Huh? I do it. <laughs> we talking about uh, Snoop Dogg album. Did you listen to it? Yes. I was it good? It. I like it. Oh. Well, yeah. he he did. Didn't he reach some height on the charts or something? Yeah, was he was like, at number one. Yeah, yeah. You listen to it. I listen to it. I need to listen to it. I listen. To you it. listen to the whole album? I believe. Yeah, I listen to it. How many songs? I don't remember. I think it's like. I think it's like 30. Oh, well, I didn't listen to the whole thing. Then. He got 30 gospel songs? We're talking about Snoop's album. So did he rap on any of them? Yeah, yeah he rapped and, um, yeah. He, I, I had to listen to this. Who I, was featured? A lot of people. All, he put all Fred. gospel artists from all over the country together. Now, how do you feel about that? I feel, um, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. But, we're we're religious, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're religious, and why can't somebody else do gospel? Mm-hmm. It may catch them up, snatch them up. Might it hey. might? It's a, it's about the message. Mm-hmm. Like, he was giving good messages. I gotta listen. He's to giving that a one. good message. I mean, I mean. What else you listening to? Like far as music. Listen, as far as music. Like um, I've been really on um to trying to. Be more supportive of some, even some of the local mm-hmm. artists, um, some of the Florida artists. Yeah. Um, so, um, but I'm I'm into gospel music, but mm-hmm. I listen to all right. all genres of music. When you say uh, deeper purpose, I, I mean gang, local artists. Uh, the closest local artist I'm close to right now is uh, Deeper Purpose. We want to give a shout out. The yes, Fox yes, Fox Deeper Logan Purpose. Yeah. I, I listen to their um, last single that they released. That it's hot. Good. It's hot. Who else you listening to? You said Florida artists. Who can you name? Um, Meacham Clark from Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Um, Isaac Brown and Gang. Heard they're from yeah, Gainesville, from, right? From Gainesville. Okay. Yeah. So mostly gospel music, but like I said, I listen to um, other stuff too. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I play weddings and stuff right, from time right. to time. So you got to know some love music. And right. then again, you know, I'm married. Oh, we yeah. ain't listening to Jesus. The offense in our bed. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, so man, it's been a pleasure, bro. It's been a thank pleasure. You. I'm glad you came right, through. Thank you it's for having me. No Appreciate problem. it. Appreciate We're it. We're gonna give you the floor right here. If you want to say anything to your family or any other thing you want to say about your company, uh, the floor is yours. You All have right. That. All right. Well, um, I'd like to say to my wife um, and my kids, I love you. Um, the Frasers, we winning. <laughs> yeah. I love you too, Miss Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> We're winning, and um, I just, I just want to um, ask y'all to support um, Comfort for You, uh, ComfortforYou.net, and Worship Dash has a hyphen Life dot net. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, support Robert and his business. Uh, he'll give you great customer service. 
Uh, like this video. Like us on Facebook. Tell them where to find us on. On Facebook. At Krugers with the C. She looked at me like she ain't up. <laughs> <laughs> like us at Krugers with a C <laughs> on Facebook. And Kruger with a C on YouTube. So until the next time, I'm Marcus. And I'm Shelby. And, and we're, we're Krugers, Krugers with, with a C. C.